Bolovinaka, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be discussing on year 13 uh, registers. From the previous videos we had discussed on language of religion, language of law. So if you've been uh, um, an avid uh, watcher of my videos, I have uh, discussed those two and some other topics under your year 13 English. So uh, now we look at the other the next one and the next register so just to uh, just to remind you once again four registers are given during exams you are to only choose two and uh, each register amounts to six marks each and uh, you are, are supposed to just choose two right? so it'll be 12 marks and um, when you are tackling these registers make sure that you're familiar so you don't dwell so long on uh, registers when you are uh, sitting for exams so you can use that precious time in other sections of the paper so this is just a brief discussion uh, on um, the registers uh, today we'll be looking at language of literary criticism now the these are just uh, summary notes eh? so your in the uh, depth uh, notes are probably given to, to you by your teachers uh, in class and this is just to complement it or to supplement the notes that you've already received if you are interested in uh, getting these notes you can uh, send me a message down below a comment and I can uh, comment your email addresses and I can email them to you or you can um, just uh, screenshot uh, your screen so they can uh, you can access the, these notes eh? so uh, without further ado let's continue with our discussion Okay, language of literary criticism. Now, before we actually delve into the rest of the notes, looking at that topic, eh? literary criticism. Literary de deals with literature and anything uh, that deals uh, like um, with poetry, novel, uh, drama. Okay, um, this is uh, literature. So what it does, it criticizes the works of literature. And it's usually done by uh, reputable sources so it can be done by a, by a critic or someone who reads a lot and uh, judges on what is uh, whether it's a good novel according to their own opinion or whether it's not eh? so this is uh, basically the 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 language or the tone that is being used the features that is being used in language of literary criticism okay the tone is formal and impersonal sometimes can be emotive eh? so tone is achieved through the use of literary jargons. So if there are sometimes some jargons there, then it becomes automatically formal. But you will also see sometimes it can be talking about their favorite book. So if I was to um, uh, give a uh, criticism about one of my favorite books, obviously I'll be using favorable words. So there'll be some emotive language. So it becomes personal or emotive. However, if it is a factual uh, depiction of my um, my opinion about a book then sometimes the language can be formal you as a year 13 student you can deduce from what the sample is trying to tell you okay the mode it is written the purpose or the why it is to analyze analyze a work of literature it is to evaluate a text in a way that is judgmental and which may be subjective and biased so you know criticism it is your own opinion about any text or any uh, work that you have read so in year 13 the novel that we have read is um, the river between by nogugi wathiongo so you can give a literary criticism on your on your take about the book whether it was enjoyable to read whether it talks about real life situations or it talks about the taboos that um, should be discussed upon like uh, circumcision etc so it is judgmental you can you can have some unfavorable words where you think the book was very crass or very um inappropriate for uh, especially when it comes to um for the boys to listen about female genital mutilation or the fgm eh? or uh, but in the story it's, it's circumcision where women are being circumcised or you can also talk about it talks it's it's a very good book to be read like some kids they never knew about fgm so this it's it's just basically based on your own opinion so it's subjective and biased so it's taking sides of 
what you prefer to talk about. Eh? Okay, sources, they can come from films, novels, and texts, eh, where you can get these, um, these literary criticism. Okay, let's look at the linguistic features. Literary jargons, example, narrative, prose, fiction, lyrics, sonnet, nonfiction. Use, these are used to make the tone more formal and impressive. So these are all literary jargons. Quotations are words that is quoted. Eh? They can be uh, identified by the inverted commas or the hanging, eh? the 66 and the 99. This is used to ascertain and explain what the critics are trying to say. So if you are quoting something that Nelson Mandela said about uh, um, Nugugi Thiong's story, how it brings about colonial rule and uh, how it, um, it dismantles um, rural settings, you know, saying that he also experienced all these things and how uh, it also stems from apartheid, etc. So when you have a quote, it is to ascertain or it is there to um, further make a point about what the critic is trying to say. So usually these quotes are not from, you know, your local butcher or from your local shopkeeper. It has to come from a reputable source, from someone whom is well known and is respected in society. Yeah? Okay, the title is often underlined or in bold and sometimes italics. Eh? Used to show the title any work of literature. So you'll have the title of the books. The sentence structure, it can be compound and complex. This is used to give clear description and explanation. Now, sentence structure is very important when you are trying to make a point. So if it is a simple sentence, it is clear, it is to the point. However, it is compound, it is giving you some extra information. If it is complex, then it is giving you further explanation. So sentence structure is very important when you are trying to make a point for anything that you write about. Right? So I'm sure that your teachers have been uh, stressing about sentence structure when you are even writing your essays. Sentence structures are important. You can't be having a simple sentence in every paragraph. It becomes very boring to read. But when you have some complexity in your sentences, then it shows that you have uh, you are you are thinking on another level, usually better level. It's no longer simple. Eh? Okay, moving on. Then you have non-linguistic features. Non-linguistic features. The examples are for language of literary criticism. There are bold prints of names or text to catch the attention of the readers. The underlining of words, this is used to put emphasis and importance on those words. Italicize words to identify the titles of the published work of, or uh, the published work of the author. Okay, so uh, these are just very simple notes and I want you to uh, look through um, the Ministry of Education uh, website and then you can go to their past year papers and try and tackle as uh, far back papers when it comes to liter literary criticism. Eh? So this will also supplement or help you with uh, further understanding your notes so you can apply. And I uh, wish you all the best in your revision. Please uh, continue to ask questions. You'll never know whether you're right or wrong if you don't attempt them. And um, always uh, believe in yourself, continue to revise, do your best. I guarantee you that you will succeed in everything that you do. So I thank you once again, and um, please subscribe uh, to my channel for more uh, updates when it comes to Year 13, Fiji Year 13, and Year 12 um, content, and I will try my best to continue to upload videos. Good night.